There is now a clear two-class system in the world that has nothing to do with skill level or intelligence. You could call it rich and poor, but I prefer overpaid and underpaid. The overpaid class covers the entire educational spectrum, from basic intelligence, for example, have difficulty using language to communicate, but can manage counting up to ten, to the overly educated elite university products. Both sectors of the overpaid have one thing in common, in that they don't give a shit about anyone or anything else but themselves. Lying, cheating and stealing are common traits of this species. The underpaid class are all those on low wages who are basically used as the footpath to riches by the overpaid. They are generally intelligent, hard-working and care about others, having something called a conscience, which is completely lacking in the overpaid class. The underpaid are the only ones who believe in climate change, and the only ones who are trying to do something about it. Interestingly, governments, who not surprisingly only comprise of the overpaid, make rules to tackle climate change, which the underpaid are expected to follow, but the overpaid are of course exempt. Both the overpaid and underpaid have hugely different carbon footprints. The underpaid has a footprint of a small garden tool shed, whereas each one of the overpaid has a carbon footprint the size of a large warehouse. Apart from generally owning more than one property, more than one car, generally gas-guzzling SUVs, they fly everywhere on a regular basis. Over 70% of flights are for so-called business, but it is the few who have saved to afford it from the underpaid class who are expected to forego their occasional short holiday flight. With internet conferencing, there should be a drastic reduction in business trips, but instead they are increasing. Which brings us to the coronavirus. The first person to bring the virus to the UK was on a business trip in Asia and visited the south of France on the way home, infecting people there too. This caused a small but containable outbreak. Then those skiing in northern Italy, a popular pastime of the idle rich, decided not to bother about self-isolating when they returned home, instead going to work, sending their children to school, etc., all in spite of the fact that they were returning from a serious outbreak area in northern Italy. So the rich continued to spread the virus by not caring about anyone else and flying here, there and everywhere. After all, the overpaid class are not likely to suffer a fatality among their numbers. It will be the underpaid, vulnerable and elderly who will die. So who cares in their opinion? Why shouldn't the peasants suffer?'